Welcome to starting out with Web API. I'm going to start out from the fundamentals all the way up to writing a real life controller with a couple of data layers and business layers. Actually, one layer for business and one layer for data. The first thing we want to do is to start a Web API project. Is you want to go to File, then we write a new, and we're going to start a project. For this project, you're going to have the option to do a web visual c sharp asp.net web application template that's the actual template we want now net offers you many other templates for you to use and to create a framework for your project but for here we're going to be using the asp.net web application template and you're going to be using a 5.4.5.2 uh, framework now the other thing you want to do is you want to rename your project not to web application one but maybe we can rename this to test web API and I usually put my projects under Visual Studio 2015 projects and web API test I'm sorry projects and then I will create a folder that will be based on what my project name is so for this particular one I'll just say test web API you want to leave create directory for solution checked on and you don't want to use source control click OK and now you'll have this screen what you want to do is you want to make sure that web API template is selected you leave the authentication as is and everything else should be the same now my monitor is a little too big so I'm just gonna click OK on the other monitor and now it's creating your test web API project okay now you see this coming up it's gonna start adding a couple of things for you uh, and the first place that you want to look at are your controls this is the main entry point of your application your web API and you you do have some pre-built controllers within here now what I want to do is I also want to go into creating a simple test controller which you can access so let's do that so let's right click on controllers we do add and do controller and for this controller we're not going to use MVC5 we're going to use Web API 2 do an empty controller okay so now I have to move this because it's the resolution is a little too large for my screen so I'm just going to move this to a second monitor just clicking on add now it's going to prompt you to create your name for the controller you should always leave this as is because the web API MVC and MVC in general is about naming conventions over configuration so let's take this and name it test first controller okay my first controller you can name this whatever you want but you should always leave the word controller there so click on add and now it's going to start creating your controller now the first thing we want to do is we want to create a route prefix and I'll show you what that is when we run this, pro this uh, controller we are going to create a route prefix oops, to start out where our controller will start so for this for any type of access for this controller you have to go to API and we'll just say this is our test okay and you what you also want to do is you just want to put in the allow anonymous attribute what that means is that you can allow anybody to access it even if they're not authenticated well and that's not important we can go into that later now we want to write a method for our controller that returns some type of value so the first thing you need to do is define the type of verb that is going to be used to access this controller so the easiest one so that we can use the browser is going to be a get so I'm going to do an HTTP get okay because from the browser I really can't do an HTTP post HTTP get and with the browser we'll be able to use a get because the browser requests all automatically do gets whenever you access a web page we're going to access an API method resource now for the route for this method is you're going to be using 
my test value. Okay. Now, convention over configuration. So if this is my test value, then the method name has to be my test value. Now, with APIs, the standard that I've used is to return uh, a result of interface IHTTP action result. Why? Because you usually want to return a status code with a response object. Uh, and I can show you that in later videos. But the first thing we want to do is we want to say public I HTTP action result. And the name of my method has to match this. So I can say my test value. And it could be camel case. So if I do that, all right. And what I want to return is I want to return an OK status with the number 20. OK, so just so that it works. Now, if I run this, the way that I would hit my method here is I'd have to first use the route prefix, then do a forward slash, and then do a route name on my URL. So each route name is identified or it's keyed up with your method. So if I was writing another method here and I name this, I'm going to do another HTTP get and let's create another route and we call it my test value or my second test, right? So and then I just, I'm just going to copy this. So this one returns 20 and this one will return 10. Now what I will do is I will grab this route and I will say my second. Now what I'm doing is not necessary. I just like doing that for standard. You can just leave it all lowercase. It doesn't really matter. So now I have two routes, two resources that I can access. The first one is going to return a status of OK200 with the number 20. The second one will return a status of OK which is the number 10. So let's rock and roll. Let's let's play with this. So if I go into the drop down here, click on Google Chrome because Google Chrome will give you the actual result. The Internet Explorer will actually save the JSON because by default Web API returns JSON data. So you you don't want to save it to any local drive. What you want to do is just uh, use Google Chrome so it's easier so you can see it on the browser. So now click play. And now what we're going to see is if I paste it here in Google Chrome is you have this test help page that will tell you about your API. And what we want to do is we want to access this particular method here so that it returns a 20. So the first thing we have to do is we have to append our route prefix. So you copy this and you do forward slash API test. So notice how this maps to this controller. If I had another controller, if I create another controller, then my route prefix would be API forward slash and then I can name it test two or test three. So for each controller, you're going to have a route prefix to access. And then within that controller, you'll have the resource methods that you want. So now I can do the test and if I do forward slash my test value and do a get, right? So I do enter. Notice how I'm getting back the number 20. Okay. And this is the XML that's generated by Google Chrome. Now, if I want to hit this method, then I can just say my second test. And again, we use the same route prefix because that route prefix belongs to this controller. And we do my second test, and you see how it returns 10. Thank you for listening and viewing. I will get back to you on the second lesson on how to move along with controllers and Web API. But at least now you know how to set up a simple HTTP GET controller.